Okay, so I'm going to give you a demo on how uh, you need a budget works. Uh, I'm going to create a demo budget here. You can actually have more than one budget. Yeah. So there we go. Okay, so we've got a completely empty budget with nothing in it, no accounts, no uh, a, a default, a default set of uh, different categories. So let's go ahead and add an account. Okay, I'm going to do unlinked. You can do linked where it's actually tied with your bank account or your credit cards or whatever accounts you have, investment accounts. But I'm just going to do unlinked for this demo. Um, <clears throat> so first I'm going to start with a checking account. We're going to call it checking. And we're going to give it a balance of $0. Boom. There we go. Now let's imagine we also have like a savings account. So let's go ahead and put savings, savings. And we're going to give it, uh, we're going to give it zero dollars as well. Okay, so we've got checkings and savings, and let's just say like you have some sort of a credit account, credit card, uh, and uh, going to give it a zero balance as well. Okay, so there we go. We've got three accounts, kind of like you know typical for people. People typically have a checking, savings, and a credit card with either their bank or someone else. Um, okay, let's go ahead and start out by giving it a balance. So let's uh, imagine today's the July 1st, okay, and so you just got paid. So I'm just going to put my employer. Obviously, it could be anyone. You can put anything you want here. Um, and we're going to give it a category. We're going to give this inflow to be budgeted. This is the money that's coming in. So typically, any kind of income you would put into this category, unless, you know, it's like a refund that's coming from some of the charge, you know. Um, okay, so I'm just going to put, put paycheck, that's fine, you don't have to put a memo, but I'm going to put it in there anyway. And for inflow, let's just imagine, you know, you're making uh, $2,500 this month. Let's just start, like, kind of average. Boom. Okay, so $2,500 is your income. If you go to budget, you'll see, boom, $2,500 to be budgeted for July, okay? So these, all these different categories and these different subcategories, okay, these are, this is supposed to represent your budget. It's the things that you expect to be putting money aside for each month, okay, that you're going to have to pay at some point in the month, or you might even have certain goals, things you're wanting to save up for, okay. So auto maintenance, for instance, maybe, you know, you figure, hey, like my automobile, it costs, you know, $500 um, every year for maintenance, you know, $500 divided by uh, 12 months, you know, comes out to like $41 a month. So maybe what you'll do here is you could, some people could do is they put something like this here just to remind them because that remains there month to month. Even if I go to next month, that remains. The numbers here might change, but <clears throat> I'm going to put aside $42 for that bucket. And as you can see, it deducted it from my TV budgeted up here, $42. This is showing how much is available and set aside for this category. Budgeted, of course, is what I've decided to take out of that to be budgeted amount. And then activity keeps track of how much is actually spent. <clears throat> okay. Um, alternatively, you can go over here and you can actually set up a, um, a goal like this right here. So that way you don't have to type this in here. You can just set it as a goal. Like you can go over here, create an auto maintenance goal, and say I want to save forty-two dollars um, monthly, and uh, every end of the month, and I can save goal. And um, even if I've cleared that out, it'll show this in yellow here, saying, "Oh, you you don't have any money set aside for this," and you can click on underfunded, and it will automatically fill that in for you. It'll even let you fill in the amount based on how much you have budgeted for that category on average or how much you spent last month. You can There's a lot of quick options here that are nice and easy, okay? But essentially, so like, let's say like you're paying your internet, uh, no, your rent. Let's say like your rent is $1,200. You can put that in there. It'll deduct it. Let's say you know that your electric is $50 each month. Let's say that your water is $20. let us say your internet's another $50. You know, your groceries, you spend about 250 a month, you know. Um, as you can see, it really breaks it down and lets you kind of choose. Um, but these, um, 
the goal is also, you know, like you know that like, for instance, you might need to like replace your cell phone in like three years. And what's really great about that is that you can start putting aside little teeny bits if you have the budget for it. Um, so like, you know, if you know that like basically you're gonna pay $800 for a new phone in three years, you know, 800 divided by uh, three is about $266 a year divided by 12 months is about $22 a month. So what you might do, that's what this true expenses is for, are things that you know are gonna come up like computer replacement, you know? So you can add a new category and you can call it phone replacement. There we go. You can even take this category and you can drag it down under computer replacement or above it, wherever you want. And we could do uh, a goal in here, put a goal in about 200, uh, 222 monthly okay or you can even put by date so you could be like okay look I know that like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 that's one year let's just go the next year let's just go two years out let's just say you know two years I'm gonna need it I'm gonna need enough money to pay $800 needed for spending by date okay I can save goal and it will automatically calculate like oh you need about 33 77 each month put towards that and so that's really great is this is a really great tool for um, putting aside money into different buckets okay um, and trying to work towards certain goals however as you know whenever you're actually going through your spending there are things you don't expect you have unexpected expenses okay and you can create uh, categories for that and actually in fact I actually typically have a specific category for unexpected expenses and I put like you know two hundred dollars in there or something like that each month because something ends up going towards it yeah stuff I forgot to budget for you know you could put like a hundred dollars aside or something like that what's really great is month to month if you've put money aside one month and you didn't spend all of it it does roll over to the next month that's how this works so you can kind of see as your money's growing and so forth uh, and in fact, you can even transfer money from checking to savings to put aside for certain things. Um, if you're trying to save up for a nest egg, you can kind of put it aside into that category. It'll still be like, you know, considered saved because everything you have in these accounts, whether it's a negative or a positive or all, um, oh shoot. I did not mean to put that inside of credit card paycheck. Yeah, let's go ahead and edit that. Um, edit move to account checking boom okay there we go that's where it's supposed to be okay so let's imagine for instance that like uh, you're paying your rent this month right so if we add a let's just imagine like you actually you know you send a check or you do a debit card transaction for your rent and uh, you know pay as landlord category we're going to choose rent the first time a certain transaction from a certain pay to a certain pay is categorized by a certain category like this, the software will remember that and it will start doing these categorizations for you in the future, which is really nice. So we put like we you know we put like twelve hundred as our thing, but let's just imagine like your rent like fluctuates or something for whatever reason. So you know let's just say like you know your your rent ends up becoming is eleven fifty nine outflow you know eleven fifty nine eighty two let's just do that. If we save this and we go back to our budget, you'll see now the um, where's the rent the rent shows the transaction in there and it shows what's left up here. Okay, so we've got forty eighteen. Okay, but let's just imagine like you know to, um, the today same day. We have um, a water bill, okay? So just, you know, water utility. Let's just say we have a water bill come in and it ends up being $25 this month. You know, let's say $24.12, okay? If we go back to our budget, we'll see, oh, look, our water's over, okay? So what you can do is you can click on this and you can choose to cover the overspending with money from something else. I could choose to take it from the excess that's set aside in rent if I want to and move it there or I could even choose to take it from this amount that's to be budgeted that's up, up at the top. So I'm just going to choose the rent mortgage thing and hit enter and then boom as you can see it deducted money and moved it into this bucket to cover that overspending. And so even though things are not perfect all the time 
you might spend more money on groceries. You might spend more money like giving gifts to someone. You might, you know, put aside 20 bucks for the month. Someone, two people's birthdays come up and you end up needing, you know, $40. But what's really great is you can move the money around from different buckets flexibly. And of course, you'll have an account of that and you'll be able to see where the money went. You'll be able to be mindful how much money do I have spent uh, left over for this category or that category at any given time. And you can choose to kind of shift things around. Um, you know, that way <clears throat> it's very flexible and you, you know where things are going. And what's great about all these different categories is, you know, you can um, get kind of like a view of like, you know, how much money you uh, have, how much money you owe. For instance, uh, let's just say the credit card thing. Um, let's say, you know, uh, some transactions, let's say like, you know, we go to the grocery store and we spend, um, I'm, on, I'm just doing July 1st, so everything is calculated immediately for everything. And so let's just say from, um, yeah, from the credit card, we're just going to do, you know, Grosh, uh, Kroger, I'm just going to do Kroger. And let's say, of course, go down here and do this, and let's just say, we, you know, we went there and it was like 168.32, and then hit save. As you can see, that's a credit card uh, transaction, okay? If we go back to our budget, you'll see that at the bottom, oh, where is it? At the top here, we actually have credit card payments and it will keep track of how much activity has been done to go in debt on the credit card, okay? Now, you may be making um, making a bunch of payments using your credit card because you're wanting those, uh, those benefits of your card. You might get cash back points, you might get like travel points or whatever, whatever benefit you get from using your credit card more than your debit card, you know that that's going to get you in trouble because you can end up spending more money each month on things that, um, on your credit card and then not realize it because you go back and you look at your checking account, you're like, oh, I've got $1,300 still, I'm good. But then, you know, your credit card debt just keeps growing. Well, what's really great about this is it always tells you how much money you've, um, used on the credit card and how much you should pay back to the credit card to make sure to pay it off. And so you can just look at it and you can just be like, oh, like this is how much total I've used on the credit card so far. Like here, let's just say like there's another category. Let's say uh, you uh, ended up, uh, you know, you got like a 24 hour fitness, you know, uh, gym membership that's like, you know, $29.99, you know, and so you got that set up on your credit card and so, you know, 24 hour fitness. And, you know, fitness category, and let's just say, yeah, you know, it ends up being twenty nine ninety five actually. And so you hit save, and then boom, go to your budget. You know, look, now you've got one hundred ninety eight dollars total. Okay, and so uh, what you can do is, if you in through your bank account, if you end up from your checking, you end up making a payment. Um, there's actually a category here: uh, payments and transfers to credit card. Okay. And I could make it outflow 198. Let's just say it's 198 even, or let's just do 195. Okay. Um, if I hit save, if I go back to that budget now, you'll see that that's got 327 left over because I ended up incurring these two charges um, here. But then the payment I made, you know, it, it keeps track of that. That way, you can spend all you want and rack up all those points on your credit card. But since you're tracking it and you're aware of how much you need to pay back, okay, and since everything is keeping track of how much money you have left in any category, um, it's really clear, you know, that like your credit cards, you're not going over on how much money you're spending on your credit card, you're maxing out how much you're putting on the card, so you're getting as much of those rewards as you need, but you're at the same time also able to, you know, you know that you're not going over, you're not getting in the red. And uh, over time, what's great about this is that you can look at your net worth and it will actually keep track of how much your debts are, how much money you have, have, and then how much your net worth is. It'll actually tell you at any point, like, you know, how much money you have saved in different things, you know. Um, I tend to use savings for expense, like I put money aside for expenses that are going to come up later that year, you know. But if you're putting money aside into like, you know, like an investment account or something like that, trying to make money off your own money, I'd recommend using a service like Acorns or some other sort of like mutual fund that's fairly safe. That's making money, but it's, you know, it's fairly safe. There, there, there are investors who are managing portfolios and making sure that like 
you're not losing too much, but you're still making money, you know, when, when the market's doing well. And uh, again, that's another account you can add here, you know, like I could go on linked and then, you know, do uh, let's see here, asset liability, yeah, investment, you know, investment, acorns, and then, you know, let's just say like we have in our budget, let's say you have an actual, is there like an investment thing in here? Let's say you're trying to save up money for like vacation or something, you know, like you could choose to like put like, you know, 20 bucks aside a month into that. Uh, and um, with the software, you could actually make it so that's a payment into uh, that. So let's say like in checking, well, hell, let's even say, yeah, checking, checking transfer to Acorns. Acorns, let's say you set up an automatic payment each month and it's automatically, you know, tracked and uh, it goes into like a vacation fund and, you know, let's say 20 bucks. <clears throat> just by, just imagine these are transactions that you're importing from your bank, obviously. So now you can see like, you know, the 20 I set aside has been used, leaving zero left over. And that money uh, actually could be, let's see here, I think I didn't do that right, acorns. Oh, that was a transfer. I did a transfer transaction from checking to acorns. So it's actually, you know, it actually deducts from my checking balance and it puts it into the acorns balance. But it's part of my overall balance, you know, and that would still be shown, you know, in here. Um, you know, I think net worth might have went up here. So that's that's a good demo of, of how I use you need a budget. And so there you go.